Hello everybody, welcome to this week's question and answer video that we do every single Monday. I'm answering you guys' questions from last Monday's video. Any questions you guys have today, anything, ask me anything you want down below in the comment section. Come back next Monday to the next video for my answer and let me know what you think of my answer. If I understood your question, if you understand my answer, let me know if I missed your question. Okay, thank you. Um... I recommend things every week. This week I don't have a recommendation, so I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me know what's the best thing that has helped you recover from a toxic relationship, heal. Maybe there's something that helps with depression, anxiety, sleep, eating, nightmares, dreams, um, ruminating, things like this, things that make us feel better, things that have helped us recover, learn about our experience, understand it, and feel a whole lot better from it. Let me know what's helped you guys the most. I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay, let's dive into the questions. All I ask is you guys, please leave us your locations. I like to know, so do other people. You can be general, okay? So first question, let's see, I think you have Todd in Utah. Hi, Todd. Hey, David, great message. Thank you. Wondering if anyone else has experienced their BPD partner to also have OCD. When I live with mine, she would start freaking out over the weirdest things. Examples, if all the three-way light switches weren't all flipped up or down in the same direction. That's obsessive. She would get anxiety and would make me fix it immediately. That's compulsive. <laughs> She would have to apply hand moisturizer every 45 minutes or she would get extremely anxious because her hands would start hurting. I doubt that they would start hurting. Sounds a little psychosomatic. She had to always have nail polish on or have paint on her nails or her nails would hurt. I, this might even go further than OCD. Same thing with chapstick, lip moisturizer. I guess her lips would hurt without it. She had to constantly apply it every 30 minutes or anxiety would go through the roof. I wasn't allowed to overstock the fridge, meaning only a certain amount of water bottles allowed on one shelf, all facing forward, or she would freak out. Oh, she just worked in retail. Anyone that's worked in retail knows this, right? We've, I used to work in retail and I, I still today go buy shelves and see something back. I'll, I'll pull it forward, make sure the label's showing. Yeah, yeah that's all. Just kidding. Everything had to be pink, white, or black. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh God, is my computer doing here? Everything had to be pink, white, or black. She would only buy pink candy, even if it was disgusting, just to put it out for decor in a bowl. Pink Starburst. She has to change the bedding every day. And I wasn't allowed to have certain clothes on top of the bedding. And I was only allowed under the covers when it was time to actually sleep. I'm, there's just another sentence or two more. But look, we all have problems and issues. Yeah. Really like the definition of is it a mental illness? It's when it becomes or it causes negative effects in your life. That's when it becomes a problem. Especially if we don't have control over it. Can't. Can't stop it ourselves. We need help. But obviously this can cause severe problems in someone's life. Um, she would go into the bathroom for 30, 40 minutes every early morning to put anti-aging and moisturizer on her face. Or let me guess it would hurt. I wasn't allowed to come within six inches of her after she did this. List goes on and on. On top of not triggering her BPD, I had to be cautious of all these other things. Anyone else experience this? Yes. Yep. Yes, Todd. I think most of us has, has experienced something to this effect if we've had someone with this disorder in our life. It's extremely common for people with borderline personality disorder or known as emotionally unstable personality disorder to also be diagnosed with comorbidity with obsessive compulsive disorder. Extremely common. Maybe most. Just taking a guess. But it's extremely common. Um, personality disorders are pretty severe mental illness. Borderline may be one of the worst mental illness there is. And 
And often, when we have a personality disorder or something severe, mental illness like that, so we have we have others, others that are associated with this personality disorder would be PTSD, CPTSD, OCD, um, may, maybe clinical depression, generalized anxiety disorder or social anxiety, um, could have sexual dysfunctions, could have uh, very, very common eating disorders. It's very common for uh, women to have eating disorders at a young age and kind of just grow out of it themselves. But borderline extremely common eating disorders, addiction disorders, sleep disorders, depression disorders, anxiety disorders. Yeah, it, I, I can't imagine anyone being diagnosed with just BPD and that's it. Yeah. Someone who's diagnosed with BPD and not other disorders most likely is because they didn't see their therapist long enough to be diagnosed with the others. And we have core diagnosis. So that her core diagnosis would be BPD and if she has OCD that would be a um, like a sub diagnosis goes along with it. Um, yeah, Todd, you're not alone on that one. Or let me say, she's not alone on that one. Thank you, Todd. And Raul Rodriguez, discarded family again from California. Hello again. Thank you for always answering my questions. You are welcome. Thanks for telling me. Thank. They make total sense and helps me understand a bit more of what I went through. Good. Good. Seven months, no contact now from XBBD. Only if it has to do with our children. Another question regarding the odd weird things my ex BBD would do. He would randomly watch videos that weird friends would send him that were traumatic, like decapitating or just torturing uh, either animals or people, horrible. When I took a peek one day at what he was watching, I said, oh my God, how can you watch that? And why are you watching that? And his response was, I don't like to watch it, but it helps me to desens desensitize people. That way when you go through something, it won't hurt you as bad because you're desensitized. I said, oh my God, that's bad. A person is supposed to be sensitive. And when I went on telling him what I thought, I thought this was weird and creepy. Can you explain any of this? Why would he say this? Thank you. <clears throat> um, I remember when I answered this, that you had more, you added to it, that I did not screenshot. Something to the effect, does this, will this play out in life if we watch violent, disgusting things or video games? Does it play out in life? Not really, no. And, and I know that we, whenever somebody does something tragic, like a mass shooting and stuff like this, we all, we want to dissect their life and be like, did you, you know, did, if it was a child, did they, what, were they playing violent video games or listening to violent music and stuff? It, it doesn't. It just really, really, not too much. Not too much. You're not going to have a stable, healthy child grow up watching some violent games and then go out and commit mass murder because of the video game. No. And anybody who's been through traumatic stuff like that can't watch it. So you can take a, a child who can play massive violent video games and not be very affected because they haven't gone through it. And then you'll have a soldier who's been through massive violent stuff who can't play the video game. No, no. When we're young, when we're immature, we kind of want to see things like this sometimes. Even if it's scary or gross, stuff like this, we want to know. It's our curiosity. Um, I, I remember when I was in my teens, there was a series of videos out called Faces of Death. And supposedly, I don't know, but supposedly there was real killings and it was available on VHS and stuff. And we passed... Uh, one or two of those around with me and my friends and we all we all we're all like this yeah oh my god oh my god but we still wanted to see it we'd pay for it stuff like this it's a child immature curiosity thing his his uh reasoning sounds like he's just too afraid to get hurt from people sounds like he's dealing with emotional childhood trauma that he cannot manage at all and he prepares himself for being hurt and traumatized again if, if what he's saying is even true, accurate, it's so hard to tell with people who don't know themselves and manipulate and lie, isn't it? You guys sitting there, you know, watching videos and reading books, trying to figure out who the person you're in love with for so many years actually is because it's they're so unstable. They don't even know themselves. They'll tell you things about themselves they truly believe and they're 100% inaccurate. Yeah. 
I, I value loyalty, but I, I do talk about our relationship to everybody else and tell them things you tell me. But I value loyalty. Yes, I do. <laughs> you know. You think you do. I you know. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. I, 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 gave, I gave you a guess. I give you a guess. It, and, and no, if we're stable and healthy and we watch stuff like this, it doesn't make us want to do it. Uh, people that do that stuff, and if we say, oh, well, look, they watched it, that's not what caused it. There's something else going on. Okay. If you, if you have a psychopath who can't have human emotion <clears throat> and they find out that this kind of violent violins is the only thing that gives them some emotion, that's not why they went and took people's lives because of the video. It's because how they felt inside before they watched the video, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, thanks for another question. Let me know what you think of my answer. If there's, if there's something I'm missing or something you want to know uh, more about, just, just ask me again. Okay. Thank you. And Cindy C. from Georgia says hugs. And I just want to say hi, Cindy. Cindy's great. You're always here. You always support my videos. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Good to see you. And Victoria from the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. Hi, Victoria. I have 17 days left before my son leaves for the military. She told us about this a couple weeks ago. I guess my phone has been listening to me talk because it's been shining Shining, horrible images of soldiers being attacked. I can't sleep my whole life away. Oh, God, get those off, huh? And you've been sleeping a lot because of it? I have to step back into reality. I decided to see a psychiatrist. Good. My problem is if my family that I don't talk to somehow finds out, they're going to think I'm crazy. And the worst part is, is I, I also think I'm crazy for not being able to handle this in an appropriate way. I feel like I'm letting myself down. No, that's not crazy, Victoria. We don't like to use the term crazy much anymore. Psychotic, psychosis. No, that's that's not, that. This isn't that. Just what you're saying isn't okay. And I'm sorry that you feel that way. That's really bad. I'm really sorry. I hope you find a way to make yourself feel better, more stable. At least you're getting some help. Hopefully they can help you. If they can't find someone else, they can. Just radical acceptance, Victoria. I can see we have a problem with things out of our control that are in our life though, huh? And we might have a problem with the relationship with ourselves and reassuring ourselves and comforting ourselves. Keep trying to do that, Victoria. Keep, keep, keep talking to yourself. Do it out loud if you need to. Write, journal, meditate, okay? Fake it till you make it. Act like you accept it. Show that you accept it and hopefully you'll feel that you can accept it. I'm sorry. The days are getting closer and making you more nervous, more scared. Write out everything you're scared of. Ask yourself how scared you are of it. Ask yourself what you can do about it. Okay. Good luck, Victoria. I hope that you hope that person can help you with the way that you feel, but you're not describing psychosis. Okay. Got some anxiety problems. Ali, hi Ali, I can't remember where you're from. What I'm doing to help myself is getting therapy on my legs. I deal with chronic pain and I'm also on medication for pain management, but it's helped me all the way around. Good, good. Sometimes it takes things like this to start taking better care of ourselves, huh? Ask your doctor about oxytocin. Oxytocin, a hormone, really helps with chronic pain. It also happens to help with anxiety and sleep and eating and depression. Rory from Ohio. Hi, Rory. Thank you for not having commercials in your videos. You are very welcome. And so are the rest of you. I don't make money doing this. I do this for free so that you guys don't have those crappy, crummy commercials. And I don't sponsor things halfway through my videos to completely disrupt the video. Now, I understand being a content creator and you want to get paid. I get it. But you are bringing down the quality of your videos by having interrupted commercials and then you sit there and talk about your stupid sponsor. I'd find another way to make money. It's not that easy on YouTube, even with tons and tons of views, but I don't know. We all need to make money. I don't hate on that. It's just be aware of the what you're doing to your videos because there are people out there that don't monetize and tell sponsors to take off. 
I've had two sponsors in the eight years. I tried it right away. It just was stupid. It just wasn't worth it. it. Wasn't worth it. So I won't sponsor anything. I won't let anyone sponsor me anymore. But thanks, Rory, for telling me. Big Dave from Tennessee here again. Hello, Big Dave. Thanks for all the answers. You're welcome. Thanks for the questions. You said you have ended relationships not out of haste because you wanted to. You gave them your reason and why you felt that way. Did you allow the other person to have their say after you were done? Meaning, did you give them time to think about this and you both talked at a later time? Uh, yes and no. Some have it, some have. Uh, I had a great relationship with a very caring person. I needed to end this relationship and I'm guilty of saying what I wanted to say and why and then ending the conversation without giving the other person time to process and reply when they are ready. And then when they reached out, I dismissed them. Did I give them closure or was I disrespectful? Um, you know, I guess, did you give someone closure? It's kind of like maybe you need their opinion to see. Sometimes we... It's impossible to give someone closure because you keep telling them why, 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 and they're like, why, why, why? You ever watch, uh, you ever watch those police shows where people get arrested, right? For you know whatever they're doing, speeding or breaking law, or whatever they're doing. But it's just, I mean, it, it, it's like they're all the same, you know. They they blatantly commit a crime in front of a police officer. You're committing a crime in front of a police officer, and so the police officer tells you to stop, and you don't stop. Then they tell you to put your hands on your back. You don't do that. They try to arrest you, you fight them, all the way down to the ground. Finally, they get you arrested, and for the from that moment on, finally, for the second they get the handcuffs on, they realize they're not getting away. From that moment until they get to the police station, it is just a constant, constant why. Why'd you arrest me? I didn't do anything. Why'd you arrest me? Why'd you arrest me? Why'd you arrest me? Why'd you arrest me? Why'd you? And they tell them every time, every time. Tell them again. The police today have an amazing amount of patience. And I'm sure the, the cameras on them, body-worn cameras, have a lot to do with it. But jeez. That's an explaining the same thing to someone. Just literally 50 to 100 times in a row. That's a manipulator. That's a manipulator. When you give them a reason, your reason's not good enough, and they just ask you again, why? You said, because I want to. Why? Because it feels bad. Why? 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 That's a manipulator that says, I don't care. Your feelings, what you want, what you need, and it's not good enough. You got a better reason. <laughs> yeah, what I do wrong? Well, you, you, we told you to stop. You didn't stop. What, what I do wrong? They don't think it's wrong. Do you see that? Yeah, if I keep doing things bad to you, I don't think it's wrong. If I do things bad to you and apologize and do it again, I don't think it's wrong. If I do something messed up to you and hurt your feelings, and I keep asking why are you crying, and you keep saying because you, I hurt you, and I said, well, well why are you crying? Well, because because you hurt me. You know, I no, I didn't. Why are you cried? Because what I did is okay. Yeah. <laughs> did you give them closure? I don't know. It looks like you made an attempt. You told them why. Closure's honesty, the truth. We just tell them the truth. Sorry, I'm not attracted to you anymore. Sorry. When you do A, B, and C, it makes me feel like D, E, F, and it's not gonna work. It's over. Okay. Bye. Okay. You didn't get them a chance to talk. You guys didn't talk about it together. Sounds like not the best closure. You asked if you were disrespectful. I'm going to let you decide that. That's up to you. That's your action. If they felt disrespected, it doesn't mean that you were disrespectful because feelings aren't reality. They just feel disrespected. Right? You may have said the same thing to the person next to them. They don't feel disrespected, but this one does. It doesn't mean you were disrespectful. Or 50% disrespectful, 50% respectful. That's up to you. How do you feel about it, Big Dave? Sounds like you have a little issue with it. Yeah. That's up to you. Okay. Sounds like you made an attempt to give closure. Maybe next time you want to talk about it with the person. Arrive at the conclusion that it's over together. And then explain to each other why we want it over. Okay. Try not to worry about it too much. Made a mistake. Didn't like it. Do it differently next time. Okay. Um, Rel Rodriguez. Hi, David. It's me again from California. Discarded. Had to share my intake for therapy finally on Friday. Finally, it opened up my wounds, though. After seven months, no contact, only for kids. It's okay, though. I know. 
That's the process to talk and share and begin to heal. Just feeling so down and sad. I know it's a road to recovery and it will get better. Another question. Did our ex-BPD not love us? How can they just walk away from their family and partner just like that? Was there no love for us? Thank you. Just hurting. Um, I, I'm not going to say everybody that just walks away from family never loved them. A lot of times there's a lot of shame, a lot of guilt we can't face, stuff like this, you know. And, and there's reasons relationships end even if we love each other. I, you know, I care about somebody else. I don't know. I, 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 I can still love you, but I don't like how you treat me. But I can't tell you if he loved his family. And I, so I'm not going to say he didn't. What I will tell you is what I do know, what I believe in, is that we can't love other people unless we love ourselves first. And that's why I tell you guys to love yourself first. I tell you that to take care of yourself Okay, and to love yourself at least as much as you love other people. Okay, so um, does he love himself or does he carry a lot of shame and feel like a bad person? That might help you decide and know. And we can tell how somebody feels about us by the way they treat us. Yeah, and if I make you feel special and I treat you special, I may think you're pretty special. Right, if I treat you with love and care, I probably love you. And if so, I definitely love myself, right? But if I yell at you and I nitpick at you and I criticize you and then just one day I don't even tell you anything up and leave and never talk to you again, that's not love and care, not in my book. That doesn't mean very much. I mean, these, these things aren't a light switch. Feelings. Yeah. I care about you so much, but then tomorrow, no, nah, nah, I'm done with you. Bye, don't care. And I'm not saying again that he doesn't care, but what I'm saying is if he doesn't love himself, he's incapable of loving other people. He can care for, take care of. Okay? Hope that helps. Thank you. Sally from Canada. Can you comment on the new endemic of adult children estranging from good, decent living parents? Why do you think this is happening so much with the millennial generation? Um, I, I, I told Sally from Canada... That I think it's important to look at this case by case and we can't broad brush this. Um, if this is endemic and it's happening a lot, I can think of two reasons. And I can think of one that's happening in this country. So I'm guessing like other countries take after us. That's happening in other countries. And we're really, really losing the family unit. We're not placing as much importance on family. Government is getting involved in our family, right? And telling us how to raise our children, which is wrong. And we're not placing importance on family values, which are so important, so important. And so where there's more divorce, they're both parents, you know, placing more importance on careers, stuff like this. And that's why most people are becoming an anxious, unsure attachment style. Okay, mental illness is rising. People are getting less help. In different areas women in different countries so suicides rising so that's one problem the other problem is what I've seen in a video a couple months ago and I saw a special documentary on this and it was about children just leaving their family and how wrong it is children meaning you know late teens early 20s never have anything to do with them again I'm a big proponent of divorcing your parents. We pick our family. We aren't stuck with them. And if they mistreat you, see ya. Big proponent of it. And I'm not telling any of you t you should do that. I don't know any of you. But it's the only thing that saved my life. It's the only thing that saved my life to get out of my family when I was 17 and not look back. I'd be in a lot of trouble like my younger brother is who stayed. Quite damaged, quite damaged for saying. Um, so I watched a video about this mother. It was a mother and father saying our daughter, late teens, early 20s, left us a couple years ago, hasn't talked to us, won't do anything, won't tell us anything. And <clears throat> the more I watched this hour-long show, I could see that the mom was using it as a smear campaign, the TV show, making herself some type of hero. And she's a great mom, has no reason. Read the letter the daughter gave to her, and it says in plain English, I left you because you guys don't care how I feel. You don't pay attention to me. You mistreat me. And the mom dismissed it all. It's nothing. We've done nothing. We've done nothing. It's a joke. 
I could see that the mom was extremely toxic, but the producers of the show didn't see it, or they didn't want to, didn't make a good enough show for the mom to be toxic. Mom has to be a great mom and just child left for no reason. It's an endemic. Well, it's, be, it's becoming more okay. We, we didn't do that back in the 50s. You have a toxic, neglectful, abusive family. That's the way it is. Your whole life, you're stuck with it. Not now. Now we leave. And good. Leave. Leave. Choose your family. Make a new one. Have some friends. Get married. Have children. That's how it works. But I'm not stuck with anybody in my life. Nobody. I'm stuck with this guy. And that's it. Thank God. If you mistreat me, I leave you. It's simple. It's real simple. And by the time we're 18, we've known if our parents have mistreated us or not. Instead of hoping that they'll get better someday, bye. Maybe I'll contact you again in 10 years, see how you are. I don't know. And if I'm not allowed to come in and out of your life, that's fine. Bye. But it saved my life. So anybody that hates on people leaving their family is, is just, you have no compassion. You don't understand. You think everyone's childhood is like yours? Huh? You can sit there and compare. You can sit there and say, oh, I, you know, my parents mistreated me a couple times, you know. Big deal. Happens. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Parents make mistakes. And they apologize. And they don't do it again. But if your parents don't do that, I suggest get the hell out of there. Especially if this has been years of this while you've been an innocent little child. Okay? That's my opinion. I think both it might be an en endemic. Yeah, because of the family structure being ripped apart by our culture, today's culture. But I also think that it's a problem that some children don't leave when they grow up. And maybe they'd be better off. Because I have witnessed hundreds, if not thousands, of toxic parents. Sad. I, you know, they're, they're my family. They're blood. Yeah, but oh, I don't understand. If they don't meet your needs, what's the point? Just that connection, just that attachment, that bond. It's not good enough for me. It just isn't good enough for me. That's my opinion. Thank you. And Monica. Hi, Monica. Sorry, I can't remember where you're from. I haven't responded to his messages. He left me 20 plus messages and even said that me not responding caused him to have seizures. Um, there's a big problem, Monica. If you don't respond to someone, especially when you don't want to respond to them and you tell them you're not going to respond to them and then you don't respond to them for a long time and then they leave 20 messages, that's a problem. Then in those 20 messages, they're emotionally blackmailing you saying, I have seizures if you don't message me. Well, then you need to go to the hospital. That's the cure to that. But now he's hanging out with my enemies. Oh, but your enemies don't cause them to have seizures, huh? Only you. He met them before he met me. But I told him now I felt about them. But how I felt about them. It makes me furious. Should I tell him or just remain no contact? I want to share my feelings, but I don't want to look badly. Um, stop worrying about how we look. And I forgot to address that in another person's questions that said, uh, I, I don't want my family to look bad or some, something like that. I'm a, oh, Victoria, you're worried about your family that you don't even talk to you and how you look. Does that make any sense? What, you want to paint them a picture of yourself? A perfect picture, look perfect, send that to them, say, that's me. Go ahead. But if they don't respect you, they don't value respect, okay? Unless you did something so badly, Victoria, that made them just not respect you anymore. But it doesn't matter. I try to respect people even if they disrespect me. If it continues, I just get away from them. But who cares how we look? I promise all of you, every single person watching this video, there's going to be people that do not like you. You're going to have enemies. Enemies are good. Enemies, just to quote Churchill, means you stood up for something sometime in your life. Okay? Um, if you care more about how you feel than how you look, I think it'll help you make a better choice. Okay? It makes me furious. Should I tell him or just remain no contact? I'm not going to tell you what to do. If he's dangerous, leave him alone. Okay? If he's emotionally dangerous, not just financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, then leave him alone. All right? If he makes you so angry, just do something about how you feel and try to make yourself feel better. Write it. Tell people. Work out. Stop seeing whatever you're seeing. Stop listening to whatever you're hearing. And tell people you don't want to hear about him. It usually works out better. Okay? And Doe8617 is from the East Coast, United States. 
just out of a 13-year narcissistic relationship, trauma bonded, etc., and having a difficult time adjusting after a discard, ruminating too much, sorry, have had other relationships where we both just decided it wasn't working. Not like this. I have been going to therapy every week for a few months, and I feel like it is going nowhere. Get different help, okay? Um, no insight, nothing. Just suggestions like do different things. Not even an idea of what to do. Come see me. I'll give you a hundred different things. I'll give you more things than you'll ever be able to do. Uh, says, I know myself more than she does. I asked, are we going to go over childhood, past relationships, etc., getting to know myself more? She told me she doesn't work that way and doesn't really think childhood relates to everything. I know I have child dysfunction, not major, but it's there. I could call a friend and get more insight or watch your videos. Do I need a different therapist? Yes. If so, what kind do I need? Uh, a therapist that understands what abuse is. Emotional abuse, emotional trauma, CPTSD, C CBT therapy, DBT therapy, understands maybe the people that abused you and what's wrong with them. You just ask. And if they don't know, they give you weird answers, they don't know and just move on because in every profession, there's people that are not capable to do their job. There's police, judges, doctors, lawyers, store clerks, believe it or not, there's people that work at McDonald's that are incapable of working at McDonald's. And maybe this therapist just doesn't know how to help you the best way. Okay. After a couple few months, you're not going anywhere. You have more questions without answers. Find a new therapist. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. And Rory from Ohio. Hi, Rory. Hi, David. One of the comments got deleted or it went somewhere else. LOL. My question is, do you think narcissists think life is a game? My husband spent hours playing Dungeons and Dragons, war games, whatever ones that were popular at the time. Do you think, here's the question I was referring to about, does it affect your life? Do you think that can spill over into real life? No. I think YouTube is holding onto comments and releasing them whenever. I get tired of it for sure. Take care. Cold in Ohio. Thanks for answer, asking me again, Rory. Um, yes, I, I, I think manipulators think that life is a game, especially exploiting people like sociopaths. They won't even talk to someone unless they can exploit to them. And it's all about the challenge. It's all about the game. And then they think they find uh, uh, self-confidence and self-worth and value in being able to manipulate you and exploit you. Um, but I don't think narcissists think life is a game because life is extremely stressful to narcissists and they end up doing stuff like playing video games or child board games well into adulthood to escape. Okay, that's what I think. Let me know what you think, Rory. Thank you. Uh, Emily from South Africa. Hi, Emily. So Emily has a few questions. I'm just going to answer them as we go here. Narcissistic abuse can make you feel emotionally suppressed. What things can you do to fix this? Start expressing emotions. Go back to these suppressed emotions. Talk to someone about them again. Feel the emotions again and then finally express them. We can do this by writing. We can do this by talking to people. There's different activities we can do to express different emotions, but there's nothing that can replace talking. If we know if we say nobody understands narcissistic abuse, at least we understand what it feels like. Yes, people can understand emotions better than what you've done, what's happened to you. My mom is also abusive towards me because she would rather keep protecting my dad than admit that they're in a toxic relationship. That's because it's codependent, it's an addiction, and that's what comes first. They'll protect that no matter what. Anything else is a threat to that. I have to learn how to take care of myself even with basic things because I don't know. <clears throat> Making sense of what happened is what heals you. It's a part of it. Uh, sometimes losing hope in an abusive relationship is the best thing you can do. I also notice that I never relax my body. I'm always tense, but I don't notice it. I hate when people start, start doing relaxation exercises. I hate when people apologize and then say, but you made them do it. Well, then that's not an apology. Okay? What are narcissists? Why are narcissists so obsessed with money? because that's what they value. People will talk about what they value the most. If I talk about how much this costs and how much that costs that you have and how much money you make and how much money I make and I just want money, then obviously I value money, right? And we all value tons of different things. Money can be on my value list. It's just way down here. And once you start putting it up here, then things like compassion and honesty and things like this get knocked down the list, don't they? Okay? They value objects, they value status. And that means money. That's it, guys. That's it. 
Thank you, everyone, for all the questions very, very much. I appreciate them. Let me know what you think of my answers. Please ask more questions down below. Please give examples, personal examples you feel comfortable sharing about some of the things that I talked about. And most of all, love yourself first, guys. Okay? I'll see you in a week. Bye-bye.